Hello, I'm Jim Toya. Welcome to my show at Kim Foster Gallery. Uh, this is a show called 30 Plus 3, which has three new works in the show and 30 years of experimental pieces which have not been shown before. The piece that's behind me is a mushroom spore drawing. It's made with oyster mushrooms. Uh, and the white that you see on the blue painted surface is actual mushroom spore that have attached themselves to the surface over a short time period. Uh, once the mushrooms are picked, they are laid down on the surface and then they expel their spore. So all of the process that you see there in front of you is the actual physical action of what happens on a daily basis out in the woods when mushrooms are growing and maturing. The painted surface that's there uh, has a, a small amount of um, pumice that is mixed into the paint. So there is a very fine kind of uh, texture to the surface and the mushroom spore actually um, settle into that surface and um, become attached to the paint surface. So they're permanent. Um, if you were to drag your finger across them, uh, you would scar the surface, but you could blow on them and nothing happens. These are some of the earliest works that are in the show. Um, this is a acetate loop drawing it actually rolls on the surface, so uh, I like the idea that things can continually change and never be the same. So at an early stage in my career, I devised a system where uh, anyone who had this piece in their, uh, in their home or anywhere could actually change it up at, at their whim. Uh, some of these were much larger scale, sometimes they were uh, 50 feet long and, and 24 inches wide and they would flow down onto the floor and loop over themselves and then um, and then they were just on one roller suspended from the ceiling so they would come down and roll back up so this is a large-scale work um, called if only words had shadows and uh, it is a wide variety of materials um, a four panel piece that has mushroom spore, mushroom ink, and uh, black walnut ink forming the backdrop primarily. This piece here is actually 18 different uh, paper wasp, nest, wasp nests, excuse my uh, French. Uh, the wasp nests have been deconstructed and then reconstructed so that all of the surface is actually wasp nest paper that has been um, dragged through uh, molten beeswax and then attached to a surface. Once you open up a, a wasp nest and expose all the paper, take it away, what you'll end up with is the honeycombs or the, the wasp combs. Uh, so this is all reconstructed along with this large piece of um, smoke bush that came from my property. Uh, I live out in the woods in New Jersey and um, that provides me opportunity to get out into the woods and streams to find the raw materials of nature that I use and uh, respond mostly to most of my work. Just tell me what was the primary inspiration for the Would you call these conceptual pieces? I, I wouldn't necessarily call them conceptual pieces. Uh, <clears throat> I would say that my work um, is based in nature and a uh, you know a, an obsession with or a, a enchantment with nature and nature's structures. I, I, I'm a big fan of Buckminster Fuller, um, so I you know I believe very much that um, the environment is a, uh, a you know a spaceship that we the Earth is a spaceship that we live on with with a small amount of material available to us and that we should respect that and. Um, so this gives me the opportunity, using nature gives me the opportunity to celebrate that. So, um, 
So I try to, I, you know, I, I make the argument all the time that nature's already done the most beautiful work that we can find. Uh, let me find a way of preserving that or turning it back onto the audience to let them admire it, appreciate it, and think about it in terms that we might not necessarily think about it otherwise. And finally, can you tell me your views on climate change? Well, do, do I need to? <laughs> it's fairly obvious. I mean, we're, we're, we're in a pretty dark place right now, and we, um, we need to do everything we can to, to reverse the trends that we've created. Um, you know, and uh, the more that we think about nature, the more that that's possible, I think. You're welcome.